Welcome Shredders! What's the fastest way to amazing improvisation skills? How can you stop playing the same licks constantly? How do you finally break out of these old boring scale shapes? Those are currently the most frequently sent student messages I get on Patreon. So let's talk about it and settle this epic battle once and for all. Should you finally learn to use the caged system? Or are three note per string scales the most effective path to pursue? Or, spoiler alert, is there another possibly even better system around? Grab a coffee, this is about to get really intense. Let's do this. So let's check out the first contender, the caged system. This is all about taking your common C, A, G, E and D chord shapes as a reference to connect pentatonic scales, heptatonic scales or arpeggios across the neck. I will break this down fast, effective and with no added nonsense in this video for you. I really want you to understand the basic mechanics, advantages and disadvantages of caged so that you can decide if this is worth digging into. So the C major chord consists of the notes C, E and G, root, major third and perfect fifth. So when we map this out in this area of the fretboard, it looks like that. In there you can find the common C major bonfire chord shape we all know. As you can see we have even more C's, E's and G's in there. You will need those extra notes a bit later to build your arpeggios and scales but please don't worry about that right now. Now let's find our C's, E's and G's in the next location of the fretboard. As you can see this results in the A shape, the shape you would usually identify as an A major chord. If you would place a capo on the third fret you'd have the same fingering as with the A major chord just moved up higher on the neck. Now let's move this up again. Our C's, E's and G's in the next section of the fretboard result in the G shape. Once again if I would put a capo on the 5th fret it would be the exact same fingering. So it's essentially a G major chord shape moved up a bit. Now to the next section of the fretboard. In this section our C's, E's and G's form the E shape. Once again if we had a capo on the 8th fret it would also be the exact same fingering as that E major chord just moved up a bit. And let's do that one last time. When we look at our C's, E's and G's even higher on the neck we get the D shape. So if you had a capo on the 10th fret it would be the exact same fingering again as with the D major chord. Once again just moved up the fretboard. So we are playing a C major chord with every shape since we are playing the notes C, E and G. But we have a C shape, an A shape, a G shape, an E shape and a D shape. And that's where the name caged comes from. One of the coolest details about all this, these shapes repeat all across the fretboard in all keys. So if you want to play an A instead of C, it's the same layout, but it starts with A instead of C. So you have the A shape followed by the G shape, E shape, D shape, C shape and so on. The reason why this system is so incredibly popular is because connecting arpeggios and scale shapes to basic chords like that is really attractive and a bit more musical than just studying where to put your fingers and learning the dots with all those scale diagrams. We all know those basic chords and with just a bit of extra work we can turn them into scales and arpeggios. And that's where the real magic starts. So to quickly demonstrate this before we move on to the next system, we need two extra notes to form the C major pentatonic scale D and A. So the full C major pentatonic scale has the notes C, D, E, G and A. So if we add D and A to all of those established shapes we get the C major pentatonic scale all across the neck and you can think of each position as the C shape, the A shape, the G shape E shape and D shape and connect the scales with the chords in your mind. That's pretty cool right? To take this a step further you can add two more notes F and B and that way you get the full C major scale. As you know this one consists of the notes C, D, E, F, G, A and B. And once again you can think of all those positions as the C shape, A shape, G shape, E shape and D shape. You can also easily derive arpeggios from all of those shapes and that will be very useful for your improvisation skills. But what are the actual advantages and disadvantages when it comes to working with this system? Advantage number one, it will be easy and fun for you to accent chords when you're improvising if you memorize the arpeggio shapes for all of those caged shapes we discussed. So if you know the C shape, A shape, G shape, 
E shape and D shape of the C major arpeggio, you have a lot of possibilities to choose from. The second advantage, you will remember and connect shapes much easier all across the neck in all kinds of different keys because you will start to automatically think of the surrounding shapes. Remember that they are always aligned the same way just with different starting points for each key. So if you're playing the G shape, you know that you always have the A and E shapes surrounding it. Advantage number three, you will probably understand the music theory and connection between scales chords and arpeggios much better than just studying music theory with a book. Practicing and improvising with the cage system is a great music theory workout for your practice routine and your fretboard visualization will also greatly benefit from that. And advantage number four, you will sound a bit more musical right away when you're improvising. That's because you start to think about the actual notes and not just about scale shapes like adding two notes to the basic arpeggios to get the pentatonic shape or adding two more notes to get the heptatonic shape. But what are the disadvantages when it comes to that? Well, first of all, a huge disadvantage is constantly missing very helpful content like this because you're not subscribed to this channel. You see what I did there? So join us now by subscribing. There's literally no reason not to hit that button right now. First of all, it's free and you will get much better at all of this by staying updated and joining our community today. Now back to the actual caged disadvantages. So disadvantage number one, the usual caged shapes mix three note per string with two note per string fingerings as soon as you move to the heptatonic scales like natural major and minor. That will obviously be a bit harder to speed up when you're all about shredding. Disadvantage number two, the resulting caged arpeggio shapes can also be a bit weird sometimes. So maybe not the optimal choice for difficult sweep picking sections. And disadvantage number three, you obviously only have five patterns with caged, the C, A, G, E and D shapes. Most other scales and modes contain seven patterns for all seven notes. So this might be an issue with fully understanding the modes or exotic scales in general. But with all that said, I still highly recommend studying the caged system. In my opinion, this is something that every single guitar player should know about. So to assist you with fully understanding and learning it, I put together an exercise routine that will help you with memorizing it in just a couple of days. And this will truly transform your playing forever. First you play the chord shape, followed by the basic arpeggio, major pentatonic scale and full major scale for each caged position. That way you get a complete understanding of the system as fast as possible. Let's check out the next contender, the three note per string system. Here you create symmetrical three note per string shapes for heptatonic scales and end up with seven shapes all across the neck. These shapes are absolutely perfect for shredding since the symmetry will allow you to blaze through every single position easily. Theory-wise, this is also a more complete approach since you end up with all seven positions for all seven notes of the scale. And one super nerdy information that hopefully isn't too overwhelming right now, these seven positions are also simultaneously the modes of each scale you're working on. So if you study the three note per string positions of the C major scale across the neck like this, the second shape you see with D as the starting note has actually the same notes as D Dorian. The next shape with E as the starting point has the same notes as E Phrygian. The next shape with F as the starting point has the same notes as F Lydian. And that also goes for the next shapes G Mixolydian, A Aeolian and B Locrian. So all modes of the C major scale. I know this part was a bit fast, but I just quickly wanted to say if learning the modes is currently on your practice list, this system might be the best way to go for it. But is it truly a better and superior system? Let's check out some pros and cons. Advantage number one, almost all the shredders unsurprisingly work with three note per string scales since they are more symmetrical and it's easier to come up with fast patterns. So if you're into the fast and crazy stuff, those are definitely the scale shapes to go for. Advantage number two, like you already know, the arpeggios you can find in these shapes are also more suited for sweep picking. Those are the classic shapes you know from all those rock and metal sweep picking etudes. And advantage number three, you will probably have the best tool to learn about the modes and their connection since you end up with all seven possible shapes for all seven scale notes. As I mentioned earlier, you only have five shapes with the caged system. But what about the disadvantages when it comes to the three note per string system? Well, unsurprisingly, the theory behind all of this is almost always ignored. Most players and especially shredders don't want to learn the music theory background and just memorize the shapes and play them up and down as fast as possible. This doesn't really result in very creative solos. Disadvantage number two. If you don't deliberately study this yourself, you won't see the connection between chords, scales and arpeggios that easy with the three note per string system. And you also might not understand how different scales are related to each other. A lot of rock and metal players I know think that 
that learning scales is an endless routine and grind of memorizing all kinds of complicated shapes, but you often only have to change one note to get from one scale to the next. And all of this is probably a bit easier to understand with the caged method. And disadvantage number three, sometimes players work with three note per string shapes that have note repetitions in them. Of course, this can sound really unique and cool, but if you don't know what you're doing, it might sound a bit awkward. I would recommend avoiding it at the beginning and working with shapes like the one you see on screen. It's not as symmetrical, but you don't play any notes twice in a row. So as you probably figured out by now, I want you to learn both approaches. To me, there's no wrong or right and both systems absolutely make sense. If I know my audience by now, you, my dear watcher, might not be that familiar with the caged system yet. I guess most rock and metal players are deeply rooted in the three note per string system. But what's this mysterious third contender? This is an extremely exciting and unique system we recently talked about in the Fretboard Mastery course I made for my Patreon community. A lot of modern, really amazing players outside of rock and metal like to work with intervals instead of the caged system or the classic three note per string shapes. Let me quickly demonstrate the power of that. The C major scale consists of the notes C, D, E, F, G, A and B. You know that. But if I put you on the spot and quickly ask you what the notes of the G major scale are, you might need to check it on your guitar first or you even might need to Google it. But with the intervallic functions, it's actually pretty easy. For these players, the formula of the major scale is just one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Root, major second, major third, perfect fourth, perfect fifth, major sixth, major seventh. And this exact structure, of course, remains the same for C major, G flat major, E flat major, A major, and so on. Of course, it would be different for C minor. Here we have the interval structure one, two, flat three, four, five, flat six, flat seven. But once again, instead of learning or thinking about the actual notes here, they apply this interval structure to the root notes of their choice and can think incredibly fast during improvisation sessions. When you are shredding over complex chord changes that move really fast, you probably don't have the time to think about accidentals, notes, caged shapes and all of that. But if you just apply an interval structure to each desired root note, you bypass all of that confusion and get much better results. This way of thinking changed a lot for me when it comes to improvisation and thinking a bit faster and you should definitely check it out. As I mentioned, I explained and all of this in detail in the second chapter of the Patreon exclusive Fretboard Mastery course. So join the world's biggest guitar community on Patreon today to get the most out of these weekly lessons. If you're looking for a place where you truly belong with constructive fellow minded shredders and a platform where you can get all guitar technique and theory information in one place, you will feel right at home with us in the Shred Guitar community. So in the end, make sure to leave a like in case you want me to do more videos like that. Your random German word for today is Zwilling. This means twin. Make sure to comment that below to confuse everybody who didn't watch this video until the end. Thanks so much for your support. I will see you again very soon. Bye bye.